We do have visitors this morning. We say thank you for being in the house of God. May the Lord bless you dearly. What the devil intends to do is empty the church and shut America off of the Bible and stop the move of God and the move of the Spirit. And just before I read my text this morning, there's some scriptures that's just been boiling over in my, in my heart. And I, I think I'll just share them with you for a second out of, out of Isaiah 51, 7, 8, and 12. The whole chapter is wonderful. I'm not just picking and choosing. But as I was reading through my devotions, these, these scriptures just leaped yes. off of the page into my heart. And, and God is not changing, friends. I don't, I don't care what America does or Russia or China, whatever. The Lord is going to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so if you can, if you can put that into your spirit to where you don't get clogged up, it's going to make a difference in the way you walk this out in the next four years. If it lasts that long. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness. The people in whose heart is my law. Fear you not the reproach of men, neither be afraid of their revilings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness Amen. shall be forever and my salvation from generation to generation. Friends, God is not going to change. He's still the same Lord yesterday, today, and forever. Look at verse 12. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man? Should fear strangle the church from worship? Should fear strangle the church from teaching what this Bible says? Should fear change us from walking before God in holiness? Friends, we're not against people. We're against the devil and his works. Don't hate people or Democrats or Republicans. Friends, if the devil can get us to do that, we've, we've lost our own battle. We hate sin. We love people. Whatever they've done, we love the people, we hate the sin. And so there's got to be this continual clearing of your mind that I don't hate the person, I hate the sin that they're doing. Yeah, somebody slapped you up beside the head, you wouldn't say, whoa, I love that, just hit me again. If you hit me like that, I don't know if I'd have enough Bible to keep my hands off of you for a little bit. <laughs> But I will tell you, I, I, would, I would forgive you whenever I got through. Uh, yeah, okay. I would forgive you. <laughs> and so what, that, that's our business is to look at people and say, you know, in our heart, you can't always confront people right up front. Uh, but you can, you can say in your heart, you know, I hate what you're doing. If they're cussing like a sailor, you can hate the filth. But don't hate the person because they could be saved because I have cussed before myself. I have not cussed since I got with Jesus at 19, and I'm 68. I hadn't cussed in that, that many years, but I, I was a cusser before I got saved. And if, if you're claiming Christianity and you're still cussing, you'll go to hell with the rest of the world. There, there, there is no, the fence don't raise up for nobody, not for Daniel Williams or nobody else. Our business is to be straight before God, and that's why he said, why should you be afraid of a man? If peer pressure can make you cuss, you don't know Jesus. I don't care what you've done. My, it ain't my gospel. That's what this book says. And that's why he said, I even I am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? People, we don't have to fear man. Our fear is to God, Jehovah. We love people like he does. He said, love your neighbor like yourself. What did he say to do to your enemies? Some of them I don't even want to pray for. That's why we got to have Jesus. Because Jesus says, pray for your enemies. Say, okay, Lord, I'm doing this on, uh, by faith. <laughs> yeah, and guess what? Some of the rankest ones get changed like Saul of Tarsus. Yeah, who became Paul the Apostle? I'm sure a lot of Christians, when they th heard his name, they didn't say, we love that guy. They couldn't stand him. 
They couldn't stand what he was doing. But when he got saved, look at the precious man he became. So don't be afraid of men that shall die and of the Son of Man which shall be made as grass. And so the, 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 our hope is to keep, our, keep things cleaned out. Chris was talking about in our Sunday school class about it, what, what Brother uh, Messick was teaching on obedient faith. And uh, he said, it kind of sounded like the oil field to me because he works the oil field all the time. And he said, those flow lines get full of paraffin and when they do, they blow up. And he said, to keep that from happening, they, they uh, take a hot oiler and they steam, steam that or heat that paraffin up to where it will go on through and they get it out of there where those lines will stay good because a blowed up line is no good. Well, a blowed up Christian ain't no good either. The only thing you can do is get right back down, let the fire go to burning in your spirit, let God forgive you. Okay, all right. All right here we are in Job chapter 11. Okay. Woo! If you need to come to the altar, right here the altar is. Come run. <laughs> Aren't you thankful there's hope in the Lord? Okay, here we are in, uh, in Job chapter 11, verse number 6. And that we would shew thee the secrets of wisdom. Oh, and that he, speaking of God, would shew thee the secrets of wisdom. This is one of the miserable comforters of Job. And he's, telling, he's telling, kind of telling Job off here. But in, in this passage, there's something, in fact, it's in this verse that I want to talk to you about that is just awesome to me. That he would shew thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. Know therefore that God exacteth of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. Canest thou by searching find out God? Canest thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? It is as high as heaven. What canest thou do deeper than hell? What canest thou know? The measure thereof is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. If he cut off and shut up or gather together, then who can hinder him? Who can stop God? Can anybody stop God? No. For he knoweth vain men. Does he know us? He knows us. Woo! Man, he seeth wickedness also. Will he not then consider it? For vain men would be wise, though man is born like a wild burrow's colt. Lord, we thank you for your word today. Lord, would you just take these words, God, and out of, out of my strength, Lord, let your power propagate truth this morning where we can, we can get a hold of your, your strength and your guiding hand. And Lord, in the fiasco that's going on, have the calmness that God is in charge of everything in our life. And you're going to see us through the storm, Lord. And let us be a light so bright that others could find hope in us as we walk before you. We praise you for that now in the name of Jesus. Everyone said amen. Here, if, if you go back to verse number uh, six, and this, this is kind of what, if you look at this scripture here, especially the latter part of it, he's, this man's talking to Job and he says, don't you know, you know, Job, Job's been through a wreck. If, if you read the first chapters of Job, he loses everything, loses uh, ten children on one day. Ten children? That's beyond, that's beyond my comprehension. I lost one. Me and Connie did one, one girl at 34, and I mean at 32. It's just unbelievable, the pain that, 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 that goes with that. But 10? Seven girls? Or seven boys and three girls? That, that was a wreck. And then all of his wealth, and then his health. His health? And then his wife, his wife looked at him and said, Job, you've tried so hard, but you ain't making it. Why don't you just curse God and die? Now, that, that's, that's, that's a bunch. And so when we're looking at life and, and we broke our fingernail and we want to throw, it, throw our hand up at God, it, shouldn't we take a look at this and see? And, and these, these, these comforters of Job, this man... If you go back to verse number one, it gives his name here. You'd love this guy to be on your side. Then answered Zephor, the name of that. 
There he is. <laughs> He's talking to Job, miserable comforter. And he said, and he tells him here in verse number six, Job, I just want to tell you, I see what God's done to you, but he's, he's took away from you less than what you deserve. Whoa. So when you, when you look at the perspective here, and friend, this is a true statement. Whatever we lose is nothing in comparison to what it costs heaven to save us. We can't get a grip on how bad sin is because we've come from that world. We're used to it. It's everywhere. You can't go nowhere without hearing cussing and seeing nakedness and, and vileness and people using uh, uh, body language that's vulgar and using, uh, well, you know, no end. And so, wh what does sin deserve? And really, what sin, the answer to what sin deserves is no hope. Sin, that's what it deserves. Sin deserves no hope. Sin deserves eternity in hell. Sin deserves punishment and cruelty and fire and torment. That's what it deserves. But see, we got somebody that's known as a daysman, as an intercessor, as an interceder. And so this guy's looking Job over and he says, the only thing you hadn't done yet is burned you, Job, and you deserve that. And all of us, what do we really deserve? What we deserve is hell. And so what I want to talk to you about and me about this morning, just to reestablish the righteousness of Christ, is we got a good deal. Would you say it with me? I got a good deal. Jesus didn't get a good deal when he got me. But when we got him, we got a good deal. We are, uh, if you've ever been to a, a thrift store or a, uh, I can't think of all. I want to stay on the women's side because they always jump in on me about uh, farm sales and stuff <laughs> and horse sales. So thrift stores, junk shops. What, what do you call what? What's out there, girls? <laughs> come, come on, Sister Ross, help me. <laughs> She's bad as we are about it. She, on the women's side. She wants to go to all. What, what, what this, oh, antique. There, that's the word. That's the word. That's holy on the women's side. <laughs> antique shop. Well, I can't say nothing because I mean I love to get a good bargain too. And if you can go in there and find something that they that they want to sell for pretty reasonable and, and you know that it's worth more than what you're given when you leave there, how do you feel? It's like don't stop me until I get to the car. Ah! You know what the Bible says? I love the Bible because the Bible is so, so precious. It says when the buyer is trying to buy something from the seller, you know what he says? It is not, it is not, it is not. <laughs> he looks it over and he says, oh, it's, uh, it's chipped, that, that's chipped down there. And uh, this here is out of line. And, and uh, now I'll tell you what I could give. And, and then it's, it's going to be too much. That's the buyer's way. It is not, it is not, it is not. But then it says, as quick as he gets it bought, guess what he says? The Bible says he goes his way. Could I say we? <laughs> Sister Ross, are you with me, baby? <laughs> we go our way and what? Boast. A boast. <laughs> Look what I got at free will. No, what is it? Goodwill. Oh, look what I got at, <laughs> yeah. Look what I got at goodwill. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> What's wrong with us? Because we like, we like a good deal. And friends, I want to tell you, when God looked at us, we were worthless. There wasn't one of us worth saving. From, from, the, from Adam plumb down to the end of the world. And whenever God said, I'm still willing to give my life for those worthless people, he gave us. A good deal. You may quote John 3.16 with almost no meaning, but friends, when we quote that scripture, tears should run down our face because he loved us that much. Woo! 
to give us hope. And so the writer says here in this verse that he would shew thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which he is. So he's saying, whatever we know, you cannot find the, the, what, what's out there in God's power and his strength. That they are double to that which he is. Know therefore that God exacteth of thee less than thine iniquity deserves. Now, the play the devil makes for mankind is that you're, you're not going to get to go back to the dance. I just want to get down to the real world. You don't need to send your children to the dance school. No. Or, or to the honky tonk. Or what. Think, think about what, we're, what the Bible is saying. He's trying to build in us hope. He's trying to, he's trying to raise us up to be like Christ. Uh, that's what the devil talked to me about. About Well, you can't go back to the dance. That's where I come from. I come from the honky tonk. I understand that world. But friends, when I got saved, I can't go back to that. I'm not teaching my ki kids how to waltz or do the two-step or do the cotton-eyed Joe. I'm through. What he, what he took from me was junk. It's what cost me trouble. That's where you get in fights over, over somebody else's wife. Amen. Help me. That's where you are outside getting a little hooch on the side. and come. Oh, y'all don't think there's a real world out there, huh? Yeah. yeah. I, I left the rodeo dance. I'm through with it. I've been there. I know, I know what's there. I know what goes on. But something happened when I got saved. And the devil said, you're not going to get to do that. And I said, devil, I don't want to do it. No, my want to. My want to has been changed. I don't have to cuss somebody out to get the best friends. I can walk away and say, God, forgive me for even thinking about what I've been wanting to say or do. I'm free from that. I don't have to have a fit and shoot my brother. I've done that one time. He shot me back. I'm not talking about BB gun. I'm talking about with a shotgun. Oh, yeah, yeah, y'all think y'all are wild. You just ain't been to the country yet. <laughs> we didn't have no TV. We had our own fun. <clears throat> now, when you think about it, we got a good deal, friends. You, you must know that this Bible is not something you just pitch around and deploy like it has no meaning. There's got to be a sacredness about your walk, or you're going to be telling yourself all the time, I deserve whatever it takes for God to get to me. Friends, what we deserve is hell. And what God has given us is so far past that. The writer says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 12, that at that time ye were without Christ, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. You know where people go that's without God? They go to hell. Hell full of people today while we're right here in this service having church. Yeah. Amen. Hell's full. Yeah. You can read it. It's in Jeremiah. Yes, there. Hell hath enlarged itself and opened its mouth wide, wide without measure to contain them that go in therein. Friends, it was not built for humans, but humans are so vile and so crooked and so stubborn. Like Brother Messer was talking to us this morning, instead of obedience, we want to slide all the time. God, we, we hear what you're saying, but we're not going to do it like you want it. We're going to do it our way or the highway. We're putting God on the highway. Friends, I want to tell you, you ain't putting God nowhere. He don't change ever. You say, preacher, you're beating me up. No, I'm loving on you. I want you to go to heaven. If Jesus comes today, what's out there that you're willing to fight for that you're willing to go to hell for? If Jesus comes before I get through preaching, is there something out there? A sip of suds or a smoke of marijuana or a dance hall or what's there? What's there that means more to you than God? And can you look at that and say, you know, yes, this is worth going to hell for for eternity. Because friends, when you go to hell, the thing that you're harboring, that you're babying, that you're loving on, that you've chosen over God and church and, and reality, it won't be there. I don't care if it's just water. There won't be no water in hell. Nothing. 
He'd say, preacher, you mad? No, I'm not mad. I hate the devil. And I hate people being duped by ignorance. So get your Bible out and, and read to the devil himself what God asked of me to be holy, to walk uprightly, to cut off every weight and sin that does so easily beset us. He's not asking more than I should give, friends. I should give more than he's asking. Isn't there something in the Pentecostal church that says Jesus is worth it all? Cover me when I'm lost. Cover me when I'm failing. Cover me when I'm sick. Cover me when I'm weak. Cover me when I'm wrong. Friends, we need the covering of God in our life. And we need to look at God and say, what you gave me. Was one good deal. And I won't be sliding on what you've offered in my walk. Where I was, friends, there was no hope. And when I found Jesus at 19, my life from that day to this has been full of hope and joy and peace. I remember the night I got saved, I went home and laid down. And that's one night I prayed and said, Lord, tonight I don't have to say, please don't come today because I'm not right. My prayer changed. If you come today, Lord Jesus, I'm going home with you. <laughs> Woo! And the tears run down on my pillow. But I knew one thing. The hope. Oh, is it a no hope? New hope had come into my life and into my walk. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 13. Here's where we were without Christ. And this is the deserving of sin. And you being what? Dead. Dead. That's, that's what sin, that's what we deserve. We deserve death if we live ungodly. Dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him. Whew. Forgiven us the trespasses. In Exodus chapter 21 and verse number 23, if you go back to the law and you see some of the reality that comes out, it's, uh, it's horrifying to know that if you live without the grace of God, what happens in your life? And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life. This is the way they dealt with it in the Old Testament. Eye for an eye. What does that mean, Pastor? That means if you get in a fight, you knock somebody else's eye out, they hold you down, and they knock your eye out. And they're saying, God's exacting of you less than you deserve. Whoa. Tooth for tooth, you knock somebody's tooth out, they knock yours out. Hand for hand, you cut somebody's hand off, they cut yours off. Foot for foot, that's under the law. You think we ain't got a good deal? Whoa! Look at verse 25. Burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. That's just the way. And if a man smite the eye of his servant or the eye of his maid that it perish, he shall let him go free for his eye's sake. And I mean, it, this, the scripture just goes on. In, uh, in Leviticus chapter 20 and verse number 10, the adulterer. Now, you may not understand this because our world has got so open fronted that we don't even have to have marriage anymore to live together. But in the real world, this world right here that doesn't change, that's God's world and God's word. He said, if you go sleep with somebody else's husband or wife, you're an adulterer. And this, this, is, the, this, is, what, this is what you get for it. That clean Snyder out just about. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Aren't you thankful that grace come and we have opportunity to be forgiven? It's not, it's not that, we, that, we can have, that we can't have failure. It's just the fact that if we do have failure, we can be forgiven of what we've done. There was no forgiveness in this. If you was caught, they killed you. And that's what Job was wrote or said. Whatever God asks, it's less than what you deserve. Woo! Isn't that powerful? In uh, Luke chapter 24 and, and verse number 19, this is retribution. <clears throat> uh, 
I'm sorry, it's Leviticus 24. Both start with the L, baby. You just gotta, you gotta read my mind. She said, I'm trying. <laughs> And if, it, if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor, as he hath done, so shall it be done to him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Can you see why the New Testament is so wonderful? Yes. Whoa. What does he say? Vengeance is mine. I will repay that Lord. So what does that do? That sets us free from having to avenge ourselves. Leave it in the hands of God. Yeah. Uh, in Leviticus 24. And look at 23. This, this man, this, this, uh, his daddy's an Egyptian and his mama's an Israelite. Him and another guy had gotten a fight. And in the fight, while they were fighting, this, this uh, Egyptian Israelite boy, Israelitish boy, he cursed and used God's name. Now, we, we've got people that claim to be Christians that uses God's name in vain and said they're still Christians. Who's lying, God or them? Yeah. And so here in, in verse number 23, they, they lock this guy up. They don't know what to do with him. They know, they know he cussed. They know he used God's name in vain. I'm just talking to you about what sin deserves. And they said, Lord, we don't know what to do with him. And so the Lord says, get him down there. And here's what it said. And Moses spoke to the children of Israel that they should bring forth him that had cursed out of the camp and stoned him with stones. And the children of Israel did as who? The as the Lord commanded Moses. Wow. And so when you see what's deserving, man, I look that over and I look at what we have. Friends, we are a blessed people. Woo! We should go around with our hands up in the air all the time saying, I praise you, oh God. I'm a thinking you. I'm loving you. I'm rejoicing. So what are you so happy about? I got a good deal. You must have been to the antique store. Oh, no. You must have been to the farm sale. Oh, no. You must have been to the horse sale, Keith. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I've been to the altar. I've been to Calvary. I've been to an old rugged cross. Wow. And when I got my sins that deserved this kind of punishment. He washed them away. Isn't it rejoicing to know we can find that kind of hope in God? Wow. <laughs> if you go back to the, the scripture we just looked at, verse number six. <clears throat> Job's comforter did say something in this passage that is positive. And he said, he's talking to Job and he said, I'm praying. Well, he said that he would shew thee, speaking of God, that he would shew thee the secrets of wisdom. And friends, what we have here in written form, and you can get it on Bluetooth. No, no, it's Blue Bible. Blue Letter Bible. You can get on Blue Letter Bible. I'm a, you can pull it up. How many ever pull the Bible up on your phone? Yeah. Isn't it incredible? Man, I mean, you'd be sitting there to, yeah. The uh, uh, other day, we, they stopped us for nine minutes on the Big Springs Highway. We was taking a beef over there. And we pulled up just as the, as the light went red. And so we're sitting there and it says, you've got a nine minute wait. And I thought, well, what a good time to use the, use the, the time and for the Lord. So Connie pulled her Bible out on her phone and started reading to us. And man, we had, we had almost our devotion knocked out, read up before the nine minutes was over. Hey, there is a way. You know why? We, we're a blessed people. And God wants to show us. I mean, this guy's talking about it, but this is true. That the Lord wants to show us the secrets of his wisdom. That they're double. I mean, whatever you can think about God, you can double it a million times. And you can never get everything that God, the joy that God has for his people. To show us that wisdom. Why? I'm talking to you. We got a good deal, man. You talk about wonderful. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 14. And here he talks about the exhibit of his precious mercy. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 14. Uh, 
I just read you all the horrible things that happens when you do wrong and how they uh, cut your hand off, your leg, your eye, put your eye out. Look here. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Friends, I just want you to know that we don't live under the law anymore. The law is like a schoolmaster. We go back and look it over the Old Testament, but we don't, we don't kill the fatted uh, calf. We don't, our, not the, yeah, we don't sacrifice like they used to. Our sacrifice now is our lips, our willingness to be uh, honorable in God's sight wherever we go. That's, that's what we're putting out now, which is nothing in light of what we received. What joy. Who don't mind giving money when you're getting a good deal? Yeah. Y'all not going to... Brother, Holloway, have you ever got a good deal on anything? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Are you proud when you get it? I mean, what if you go to the store and meat's been like $8 a pound or 20 or whatever it is? Now, I don't, I don't go enough to know. And they say, well, we got this on for $4. And you want to fill the whole basket up, and they say, no, you can only have two pieces. <laughs> so you run to the car and send, send your, somebody else back in there, give me two more <laughs> You can go, okay, what? Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was what? Against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, and whose cross did he nail it to? He put it to his cross. He set us free. Man, that we could, you, you talk about exhibiting his precious love. I love what Brother Charlie, Charlie um, Garcia, he's our, our, one of our pastors over at, at Andrews right now in Maranatha. But he was in the jail with me for a while, and in fact, me and him started rotating. I'd go one Sunday, he'd go a Sunday before we went and took the church. But anyway, I, I love what he said in the jail. He said, all the promises of the book are true, but none start until repentance. <laughs> Isn't that a heads up? But it's available. The promises of God are ours. If we'll repent and turn, the promises flood us, follow us, catch up with us, overtake us. You can't get good measure pressed down, shaken. You can't get ahead of what God has for you if you live for Him. Man, there's no sweeter song than those words, I forgive. You remember the song, the sweetest words I've ever heard is, I forgive. That's Jesus talking to us, looking us over and say, yes, I'm willing to forgive you. In Luke chapter 15 and verse number 24, you remember that scoundrel they call the prodigal son? I don't know if the ladies have been there. They've probably been prodigal daughters, but help me now. <laughs> There's been a bunch of us been out there and come back. I, 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 oh, I see you, baby girl. <laughs> She's pretty tender. I remember coming back. I knew right, didn't do right, but I remember coming back to God, man. And look, look at the writer here. And we're talking about um, how the Lord exhibits His precious mercy towards us here in Luke 15 and, and 24. And here, here's the father defending the son that, that took everything that he was going to give him as his inheritance and throwed it away. For this, my son, was what? He was dead. Was he, was he really dead physically? No, he was dead in sin. My son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And what did they do? They began to make merry. Friends, we've got every reason to shout. I mean, to enjoy the things of God, to worship uh, and sing praises and, and run around the altars and pray through and speak in tongues and pray for people that's sick and believe God to do the miraculous because all of this has come because of His exhibit of mercy towards us. In Titus chapter 3 and verse number 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy. He saved us. How? By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Friends, we need to be tongue talkers. We need to be full of the glory and the power of God. We need to rehearse Acts, the whole book, over and over in Pentecost, not be a denomination, but what is reality in the Bible for the church of the New Testament. In Luke chapter 23 and verse number 34, and I don't know if you're reading with us through the, through the page there of a, like, like we're going, but yesterday's reading was Matthew 26, 27, and 28, where they arrest Christ, condemn Christ, beat Him, pluck His beard, 
take a rod and whoop it over his head, make a crown of thorns, put him on an old rugged cross. Man, and, and, and then I, I'm looking at, at the sermon here and look at this passage in Luke 23 and verse number 34. Jesus is he's on the cross. Then Jesus, <clears throat> Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. They're down there gambling right at the foot of the cross. I isn't that incredible? And Jesus, what does Jesus say? He says, I, got, I gave you boys a good deal. <laughs> I'm asking my Father to forgive you. Man. We gamble with our soul if we don't follow what the book's got to say. And Jesus has given us opportunity a whole lifetime to make things right. As long as there's life in the body, there's hope for the soul. Make it right. Live your life every day like Jesus has come in that moment. And then when He does come, it don't make no difference. You're ready to go. <clears throat> One more thing I want to talk to you about before I close. And uh, it's what, it ain't 12 o'clock yet, so you know we've got about 30 minutes. Now you said, I'll tell you what, preacher, I'll just leave. Well, I'm going to get somebody to man the door where you can't get out. Brother Ross, go over there and run them down and throw them back in. <laughs> That's one neat thing about preaching in the prison. They can't get away from you. <laughs> they may not come back, but you got one shot. <laughs> I've preached in the jail since 79. I mean, it's always neat. You know, when they come out there, I said, Lord, I guarantee you when they leave, I won't short them on the gospel. <laughs> they may not come back, but they're going to get a good opportunity to make things right. Now, this scripture is kind of funny, but I think in, as we close, that this, this has got to be looked at when we think about what kind of a good deal we really got from God. We're going back to our text. This is Job chapter 11, and we're going to verse number 12. He's looking at us, and he talks about <clears throat> this word vain means worthless. Worthless? Vain man? Worthless man would be wise, though man be born like a wild burrow's colt. So, what he's saying, in just in real common terms, is that we're wild by nature. All of those thoughts of doing your way or getting doing what you want to do—that's the wildness of the human nature, because. We failed in the garden through Adam and Eve, and that sin nature has followed us. There's a twinge of wildness there. Connie's got a, a cat that uh, I guess is a feral, maybe a feral cat. He, he was so wild, but he was so skinny when she found him that he would let you, uh, he, would, he would let you feed him. Not touch him, but feed him. And now he's fat. And he's called Tom, and he's big, but he's still, he's, uh, if you pick him up and hold him very long, his tail goes to going. And so Connie says, get out of here. You're, you know, she, she gets to hold him about, you know, about a minute, and then he's like, I'm through. <laughs> I'm not a lap cat. <laughs> I'm a wild cat, <laughs> and I'm only here because I like groceries. <laughs> well, you know what? Who don't want the blessing of the Lord? Have you ever seen those little deals, those things that's got all the promises of God in them? How come you don't see the one with all the curses? Did you know? If you look in the Bible, there's a lot more curses than there are promises. Yeah. It's, it's the, the curse of sin. He, he's not, and, and so we should balance it. But, you know, we want, we want all the promises, but we don't want what goes with them. But repentance is what goes with it, because by nature, we are wild. We are feral. But God wants us to find wisdom, and wisdom comes through repentance. Yeah. And that's when you begin to say, not my will. Not my wild way, your way, Lord. I've been wild forever. I've been crazy. I've been doing it my way, and I don't care who cared or don't like it. But friend, when you get right with God, all of that ignorance is broken out of you. You're no longer doing your tail like this because it's 12 o'clock. I'm talking about the cat now, you know. Yeah. So he's got a plan for the rest of our life. Not only does he save us, Forgive us, give us a good deal, but he's got a plan for tomorrow and next week and next month. And that plan is wisdom. 
wise enough not to go back where you come from. Now that cat may go back outside, but in a little bit, when he gets hungry, about two or three hours later, he hops up in the window right in front of where Connie's washing dishes. And he sits there and he says, you, you know, I'm really sweet. And he's going, yeah. You can hear him through two planes, two panes of glass. Yeah, and you can see his teeth. He's got his teeth and everything right there. He's got his nose about that far from the window. He's looking straight at you. Yeah. 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 It's not, it's not that meow, that real sweet cat, you know, that just lays down there and purrs for every. Not that it's meow. And like, and like what's going to happen if you don't feed me? <laughs> and so she'll, uh, she'll get him some food out and get it yeah, a little bit. You know, he's, he's better about it. But as quick as he gets through eating, Boom. <laughs> I got what I wanted. Friends, we can't just use God. I mean, I can understand the cat. He's just a cat, but you're a human. You know better. And we cannot let the wildness of yesterday and that feral thought of sin be what drives us forward. He says in this verse, vain man would be wise. Friends, God wants to use wisdom to carry us away from where we've been into his righteousness. So we'll just look at a few scriptures like uh, Matthew 6 and 24. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. What's he doing? He's showing us wisdom. If you're going to follow Jesus, what do you do? Everything that's Pharaoh goes to the cross. Amen. Everything. And wisdom replaces ignorance. And so if we're going to follow Jesus, what do we do? Every day we pick our cross up and say, Lord, anything, any thought, any hatred, any envy, any strife, any disobedience, any faith that don't believe and follow God, I'm going to put it to death at the cross of Calvary. Look at, look at John chapter 8, verse number 31. <clears throat> this word starts off with I elf. Friends, Nobody in the church world today wants to preach a if gospel. But from the beginning of time until today and when Jesus comes back, there's always been a limit to God's mercy and grace. And that limit is I elf. If you do this, I will do this. You know why Abraham become the father of faith? Because he didn't say if. He said, yes, I will. He followed Christ. What, what, what happened to Laban? No. Cain, no, I got the wrong one. Who was it? Went to Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot, yeah. I had the ale, right? But just didn't have the rest of the stuff. Lot. What happened to Lot? How come Lot goes to Sodom and Gomorrah and Abraham, I mean, he's blessed. Lot loses everything. There's a reason. There's some feral in there. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to get down to you. I'm getting, I'm running fast as I can. If you continue in my word, what? Then are you my disciples in what? Indeed. Deed means what you do, what you do, what you say, the way you act. It's everything about your life and mine. What really makes me have a good deal is do what God says. Do it God's way. Did you know you can mess a good deal up? Yeah. Yeah. You could have had it for this much, but that was yesterday's price. Can you imagine about going to hell and saying, Lord, now I'm ready. It's in the Bible, Luke chapter 16. The rich man, he don't need God till he gets in hell. You know why? He had the good deal all the time, but he wouldn't take it. But in hell, he lifts up his eyes and said, I'm ready now. In fact, I don't even need salvation. Just give me water. Does he, does he get out of hell? No, if you've read the passage, you don't get away from that. He's there. He could have learned wisdom, but that wild character made that rich man say, you know what, I've, I've, I'm probably going to make it because I've got money. Friends, money is not going to fix your problem or mine. We need the good deal. His name is Jesus. Would you say it with me? His name is Jesus. Whoa. And he's loving on us. He wants us to be wise, not wild. In James 3 and 3. He talks about us putting bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Wow. That's not uncommon. You see somebody riding a horse. If they're riding him, they got a way to steer him, to guide him. What would you do with a car without a steering wheel on it? You, you willing to punch it in and say, okay, take me to 10 buck two, just punch it. No, I'm scared. <laughs> you may can stand it, but I don't believe in electronics that much. And so he talks about on down in James 1 and 26, and we've used this scripture against cussing, but also this is a teaching scripture that the Lord, this is wisdom. If any man among you, so look around. I can see one way back there in the back corner. I can see Brother Holloway. 
Yeah, look around. If any man among you seems to be religious and won't, and won't bridle, have you ever had a horse without a bridle on? You know what he does? He does what he wants to. The bridle is to say, no, you can't do what you want to. You've got to do what God is saying. So, if any man among you seems to be religious and won't bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion, this man's religion is in vain. Is he wise or foolish? He's foolish because he stepped over the line. He had a good deal, but he throwed it down. And so, I want you to keep your good deal. If you've got a good deal, hang on to it. And friends, if you've got Jesus, you've got a good deal, as good as can be offered. In Jeremiah chapter 11, and verse number 20, he talks about here, O Lord, that triest the reins of the heart. And friends, if he tried the reins of Jeremiah, you can know he's pulling up on us to see if, if it's going to work. Have you ever tried the brakes in your automobile? Just to see if that, you want to make sure to stop for you. <laughs> How important are brakes, Brother Herndon? You drive a truck every day. Are brakes important? You, like, look at, listen at him. You have to have it. And friends, if you serve God, there's got to be a brake pedal in your walk that says, there's some places I don't go. When God says S-T-O-P, that don't mean spin tires on pavement. That means shut it down. Wow! Is there some woe in you? Yes, I'm stopping. Why? I got a good deal. I'm not messing this up. Woo! Jeremiah 17 and 10. I'm closing right here if you'll stand together with me. Here's the author of the good deal. I, the Lord, search the heart. You may be here this morning saying, Preacher, I don't care how funny you are, how long you preach, you ain't going to tell me what to do. I, I don't want to tell you what to do. I want you to hear what Even to give every man according to his ways. Friends, he's not going to judge you through me. He's going to judge you by, between you and him, your own walk. My heartbeat is, know you've got a good deal and don't mess it up. Even to give every man according to his ways. Your way and mine is ordered by the Lord. Every day he's watching over us. And if we've got, no we got no stop in us, guess what? That comes on us. And according to the fruit of his doings. That's the way we're judged. Did you know we can get a check mark? I love those. I even took a D minus one time to pass English. <laughs> you know what the next grade was? Failing. <laughs> and my English teacher, she said, I want to give you an F so bad. But I had to give you a D minus. I had to round your grade off. And she said, I'm so mad at you, Danny Williams. You could have done better. Friends, I just want you to know you can do better than what you're doing. Why take a D minus when you could get an A? Why not this morning make up your mind? Instead of running on the rim, I'm going to put the tar back on. Will the rim last very long? No! It's time to pull up church people and look at God and say, God, you gave me a good deal. And devil, you have all offered me nothing but eternal damnation and for that reason I'm going to spend my life serving Jesus hallelujah with heads bowed they're going to play this morning just as I am without one plea I come broken after that and friends would you come to this altar today and say Lord I'm coming because I got a good deal and I don't intend to live feral I'm not going to be a feral person. I am going to be not wild, but wise in my walk with Christ. And if you, if you don't, if you haven't known the Lord before, meet me down here at the front. I want to pray with you. You can whip the devil. You know why? You got a good deal. Yes. They're going to sing it right now.